Geckos are fascinating animals. These small lizards can camouflage to become invisible, can regrow their lost tails, and most notably, can walk on almost any surface, even on glass. But how exactly do they do that? And maybe equally as important, is how can we obtain this ability using modern technology so that we could also walk on any surface? I am Mario, and I hope you'll enjoy this video. It might be worth noting that not all gecko species can actually walk on the glass, like this cute leopard gecko here. Still, about 60% of the gecko species do have this superpower, and we are going to talk about them. So how do they do it? How do geckos defy gravity and walk on any surface, even upside down? A couple of plausible theories come to mind, like using magic, using suction cups, or maybe having a glue-like substance on their toes. But none of these theories hold ground, since having glue on their toes wouldn't allow them to move their feet so easily, and their superpower works even in a vacuum, where suction cups wouldn't normally work. And unfortunately, geckos are not magical creatures, although they are magically cute. They actually make use of a force that acts at a molecular level called the Van der Waals force. Luckily, I have recently finished an introduction to chemistry course, so I can say that I am an expert when it comes to any chemistry-related subject, including intermolecular forces. Van der Waals forces are attraction and repulsion forces caused by correlations in the fluctuating polarizations of nearby particles, which sounds very complicated, but it's actually pretty simple to explain. Usually, positively charged molecules will be attracted to negatively charged molecules, since opposites attract. But what if I told you that even neutral molecules can still attract one another? Since the electrons of an atom move around in the cloud of electrons, one side of a particle can become temporarily positively charged on the side with fewer electrons, and negatively charged on the side with more electrons. So the atom becomes like a small magnet that can attract another atom with an opposite charge on one side, and this is the Van der Waals force. Still, this force is the weakest of the weak chemical forces, being nowhere as powerful as a covalent or ionic bond. Despite that, if you add up millions of such forces, you end up with a really powerful attraction between two surfaces, and that is exactly what the gecko does. Humans cannot stick to walls because even if at a glance it seems that your hand is completely flat against the wall, if you take a closer look, you can see that only a very small percentage of molecules at the tip of the ridges on our hands actually come in contact with the wall surface. So the few van der Waals forces are not enough to make a noticeable difference. Gecko's toes, though, are adapted to increase the number of molecules that come in contact as much as possible. Each of a gecko's foot pads is covered in thousands of hair-like structures called CT. There are about 14,000 CT on every square millimeter, but that is not all because each of these city is in turn tipped with between 100 to 1000 spatulae, which are basically really tiny hairs shaped like a spatula. With millions of spatulae coming in contact with the surface, there are more than enough Van der Waals forces to make the gecko stick to almost any surface. The force of attraction is in fact so powerful that a gecko could hang on only one of its toes, and if all the city on the gecko's foot were to be in contact with the surface, it could hold up to 133 kilograms. By the way, I'd love to know what you think of this type of video, so me and Spike would really appreciate it if you left a like or even a dislike and wrote your opinion in the comments. Back to business. So if the force is so great, how does the gecko detach its foot with such ease? It is because it has really weird toes that fold in the opposite direction from the human fingers. This allows the gecko to overcome the Van der Waals forces by detaching their toes from the tips first, so that only a few forces are cancelled at a time. It basically works the same way as peeling off scotch tape. The gecko also secretes phospholipids, a substance that lubricates the CT and allows the gecko to detach its foot easier before the next step. Now that we know the secret to the gecko's superpower, an interesting question crosses our mind. Can we replicate it? and walk on walls ourselves? And the answer is… definitely. The military is particularly interested in making this possible. In May 2014, a prototype has been demonstrated by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, showing off their latest iteration of Gekskin. They had a 100kg researcher scale an 8 meter tall glass wall using only two climbing paddles. DARPA hopes to give soldiers using this technology Spider-Man-like abilities that could be used in urban combat. 
And while it looks kind of bulky and impractical for now, once it has been perfected and made more consumer friendly, it will definitely be a cool gadget that will allow anyone to walk on any surface. But while granting people Spider-Man like ability sounds fun, this is far from the only use of Gecko-inspired materials. Another intriguing use is the Gecko tape. The advantages of Gecko tape over regular tape are that it can be washed and reused over and over again. While manufacturing synthetic CT is not a trivial material design task, you could make a pretty efficient Gecko tape yourself. Some YouTubers have already tried making some DIY Gecko tape. They poured some silicon over a diffraction grating sheet. The resulting sheet of silicon will have thousands of tiny ridges imprinted on it, increasing the contact surface, and from their experience, this DIY tape was surprisingly powerful. If you are interested in trying to make gecko tape yourself, I will provide the link to one video in the description. Now, if we take this gecko tape and put it on the wheels of a robot, we are going to have a robot capable of going up a skyscraper with ease to wash the windows. It could also be useful for efficiently cleaning solar panels without damaging them. A gecko-like robot could also climb the walls of a building in a rescue mission in the near future, or could perhaps be used for surveillance. The possibilities are endless. Who would have thought that so many cool technologies could be derived from these cute geckos? But this is the case with a lot of other animal superpowers. Nature has perfected amazing skills and abilities in countless animal species over millions of years of evolution. All we have to do now is take a closer look at what nature offers us, understand and then mimic these abilities to come up with more awesome animal-inspired technologies. I really hope you enjoyed this different type of video, and if you'd like to see me break down more animal abilities and their uses, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon not to miss any new videos. And lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting me, and if you really love what I'm doing, you can also support me on Patreon to fill up that list with your name. Respect, animals.